Hello and welcome. What we're going to be talking about are circles today. There are two forms of circle equations. The first one is standard form and the second one is general form. With standard form, it looks like this. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. In standard form, you can find the center. It's already given to you. The center of your circle is going to be located at h, comma, k. And your radius also is right there. It's located, it, sorry, it's r. Let's take a look at the equation itself and the center and the radius. Let's do a comparison here. So if I look at this, it's a negative here but it's positive here. It's a negative here, but it's positive here. So when it's in standard form, make sure when you're finding the center that you write the opposite of sign that's listed right here in the equation. So if this is a plus, it'd be a minus. If this is a plus, this also would be a minus. Now in standard form, it's equal to r squared, but the radius is r, so whatever this number is right here, you take the square root of it to find out what r is. So, let's take a look in general form. In general form, you have ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus f is equal to zero. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I missed E. Well, E will show up when you get to conics, the conic sections in Chapter 10 in Precalculus 2. So we'll worry about E when we get there. In the general form of the equation, to be able to, to graph this by hand, you need to convert it into standard form. So first, let's look at standard form and graph a couple of those. So we're going to start out with x plus 2 squared, y minus 3 squared is equal to 4. Oh, that's not a very good 4. Let's try that again. Let's try this 4 again. Okay. Is equal to 4. So I know what my center is. My center is at, remember, it's the opposite sign. So if it's a positive 2, it'll be a negative 2. And if it's a, a negative 3, it will be a positive 3 there. My radius is equal to the square root of 4, or just 2. So to the graph this, I come over here, and I go to negative 2. I go to positive 3. And I put my center right there. Let me move this over here. I know my center is at negative 2, 3. And my radius is at 2. So let me erase this other side. So again, we're at 2, 3. Here's my center. And I mark it. Now, I go out in each direction from that center two places. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and I draw a circle to the best of my ability. And there's my circle with a center at negative two, three, and a radius of two. Now, suppose I'm given the center. I'm given a center at negative 1, negative 4, and I'm also given a radius of, say, 3. I'm asked to graph this, and I'm asked to put it in standard form. So I go to negative 1, I go to negative 4, and I put my center right there. From there, I go out four in each, excuse me, 3 in each direction, and I draw my circle. So there's my picture. 
Now, if they want it in standard form, then I use this information right here, my center and my radius, and I put it back into the equation of standard form. The equation, again, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So I have x minus a negative 1 squared plus y minus a negative 4 squared is equal to 3 squared. Or I simply could have known that I have x plus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to 9 because I know that whatever this is right here sign-wise, if it's a negative, then in the equation it's going to be the opposite. So if it's a negative, it'll be a positive 1. If it's a negative 4, it will be a positive 4. And then all I have to do is take that 3 and square it. So let's take a look at an equation where it's not in standard form and instead it's in general form. So let's look at x squared plus y squared is equal to 4x minus 6y plus 5. This is not even close to being in standard form. So the first thing we want to do is get all of our x's together and all of our y's together. So I'm going to need to bring over that 4x and that negative 6y to the left-hand side. So I have x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 6y. And I'm going to leave the 5 on the right-hand side because eventually that will be part of my radius. Now, in standard form, I have a perfect square trinomial. Let's go back one more time, take a look at that. This is a perfect square trinomial right here and right here. I don't have a perfect square trinomial right now on either one of the x's or the y's. So let's, make it, let's complete the squares and make these into perfect square trinomials. So I have x squared minus 4x. I'm going to need to add something there to make it a perfect square trinomial, plus y squared, plus 6y, and I'm going to need to add something there also to make that a perfect square trinomial, is equal to 5 plus, and remember, if I've added something on the left-hand side, I have to add the exact same thing on the right-hand side. So I'm going to have 5 plus a blank plus another blank. That takes care of what I add to the x part and what I add to the y part. The way in which I complete the square is I take this right here, this negative 4, I divide it by 2, and square it. So I get 4 there, and I'm going to add 4 over here. I take this 6, divide by 2, and square it, and that gives me 9 here and 9 there. So if I take a look now, at my x's, this is a perfect square trinomial. It will become x minus 2 squared plus, second, my y's are now also a trinomial. Let's take a look at this. This is a, also a perfect square trinomial. So it's going to be y plus 3 squared, so that factors in too is equal to 4 plus 5 plus 9, which is 18. So I now know what my center is. My center is at 2, negative 3, don't, re don't forget, opposite signs. And my radius is at the square root of 18. And if you wanted to clear this up a little bit, you can write this as 3, the square root of 2. Now, let's take a look at one more, not in standard form, it's in the general form, and we've got to deal with coefficients on the x squareds and the y squareds. 
And we have to do this first. That is, sorry, that should be 8x. So do this again. So plus 8x plus 7 is equal to 0. So what we've got to do first and foremost is we've got to get rid of the 2 in front of the x squared and the 2 in front of the y squared. Because when we complete the square, we don't want we want a perfect square trinomial with the leading coefficient being 1. Right now I don't have that. So I'm going to take and divide everything by 2, each one of my terms by 2, to get rid of that leading coefficient off the x squared and y squared before I complete the square. So I've got x squared plus y squared plus 4x plus 7 halves is equal to 0. Now I'm going to reorganize it so my x's are together, my y's together, and anything without an x attached or a y attached will go to the right-hand side. x squared plus 4x plus, and I know I'm going to be adding something there, plus y squared. Oh, there's nothing else to worry about there, so that's nice. Is equal to a negative 7 halves. So, and don't forget to add that plus something. Let's go ahead and just complete the square on this one right here. I take this 4, divide it by 2, square it, so it'll go there, and that will go there. So I have x plus 2 squared plus y squared is equal to negative 7 halves plus 4. Well, that's negative 7 halves is negative 3 and a half plus 4 gives us 1 half. So my center is at, don't forget the opposite sign, negative 2. And right here, because there's not anything there except for the y, that means that the y part of the center is on the x-axis. So that's going to be 0 right here. Is it, and then, sorry. And then, our radius is at the square root of 1 half. And if you wish to clean this up, rationalizing the denominator, you're going to have the square root of 2 over 2.